What's going on guys, Bengal again here. Today, I'm gonna to be showing you how to do your franchise fantasy draft, and then how I would actually draft out the team. There are a number of different ways. If you're doing a fantasy draft amongst a bunch of other users, the draft is gonna be a lot different than what I'm gonna be doing here. But if you're playing against a computer, like I always do, just drafting the players that you want, I do have a fairly good strategy, and unfortunately, Almost every single time I do a fantasy draft, they go, oh, you have between the 27th and the 32nd pick. So I can never really take a quarterback, which isn't the worst thing, because you can always draft one in a year, but it depends how long you're doing the franchise. What you want to do to set it up, hit starting point, fantasy draft. Very simple, but it's not like the easiest thing to find. You wouldn't probably think that starting point would be how you get to fantasy draft, but it is. And then all you have to do is go into start playing. It'll bring you to uh, the main menu screen, a bunch of tutorials, don't care about those, and then start your fantasy draft. If you guys are new here, hit that subscribe button for more life-changing tips like that. And there I am picking at 22nd. Here's the problem with picking 22nd, in my experience. All of the best quarterbacks, poof, gone. And that's not like, oh, you don't think Tom Brady's one of the best quarterbacks? Not for building a franchise, he's 44. He's really about 20 years older than you'd like him to be. <laughs> Maybe not quite, but about, right? You don't really want to draft like a 28-year-old quarterback. It's not the worst. Like you could, you could get by with a really good 30-year-old. Let's Okay, whatever. Um, but he's too old, is my point. Ryan Tannehill at 33, probably not going to be your guy. Like he's only going to get worse. Baker Mayfield might be worth drafting at 26. Star Dev will continue to improve. Cannon of an arm, pretty good speed. Baker Mayfield's pretty good. So we could go in that direction if we wanted to. We could do that. Could take Justin Herbert. Justin Herbert's probably a really, really good idea for a pick here. But again, there are a number of different ways you can do this. Usually these best quarterbacks are gone. Like Joe Burrow, you might want to take as well. Zach Wilson, Justin Fields. Usually those type of players don't stick on the board too long, but those are quarterbacks worth taking. Now, will they be available in the second round? Maybe, maybe not. So I might opt to go with a different position. And I think usually the way I like to draft out my fantasy drafts is to go after those younger players that will develop a ton. So I wouldn't take a 92 overall Devin McCourty, even with Superstar X Factor, who's 34. I would take Minka Fitzpatrick who's 24 years old, so much younger, with superstar dev. Even though he's lower overall right now, by the end of the season, and certainly next season, he will be a higher overall than Devin McCourty. The same reason you take Eddie Jackson, or even Justin Simmons, who's 27. Not super young, but pretty young still. Kevin Byard, same idea. He's 28, superstar dev. But you want to stick to younger players in general. Like Antoine Winfield Jr. would be probably the guy I would look at. He's only 23. He will be up, you know, in the mid to high 80s by the end of the year, probably. So I like to go after younger players who are already kind of pretty well adjusted and developed. Like I wouldn't go after any of these big running backs early. I would certainly wait and maybe take a player like James Robinson, but you'd like a higher development trait. Maybe a Clyde Edwards Alaire or maybe a Jonathan Taylor. Like these are the guys you want to look at. The guys who are like, 21 to 25 in the like 80 to 85 range. That's kind of your sweet spot. For wide receivers, I probably would never take Devontae Adams, who's 28. But what I would be looking at is all the way down the board, I'd look at some of the younger guys like Justin Jefferson. And maybe I would even wait on receiver because if I'm building a franchise long-term, I'm not really too worried about what the first year is looking like. If you sort by age here, I'm looking at some of the rookie receivers. Jamar Chase, Elijah Moore. Of course, you know, my biggest draft crush of all, Jalen Waddell. Where is he? 97 speed, star better development. Jalen Waddell is an absolute monster. So I'm not really looking to take any of these guys right now. So what would I do with the first overall pick? I might take like a Chase Young type 
someone I know is not gonna be sticking around. 86 overall, superstar dev, only 22 years old. I know it seems like a, wor a weird first pick, and maybe I don't do that. I'm kind of all over the place right now just because we have like limitless players we could take. Like Marlon Humphrey would be a sick pick. He's only 25 and he's a corner. Marlon Humphrey is probably at the very top of the list right now. Ooh, Marlon Humphrey might be the pick. We don't really have to worry about offensive line. Aaron Donald is also someone I'm highly considering. Even though he's 30, he's a 99 overall with superstar X Factor. He's just way too good. But yeah, let's go with Marlon Humphrey here. Really, really important position. Cornerbacks fly off the board and they're really, really important. Marlon Humphrey at only 25 years old with superstar development. I know it seems like a weird pick, but we can either come back for a quarterback when the snake's back around to us and maybe go with Justin Herbert or just wait for a quarterback in the draft. So let's see what's available. Joe Burrow's there. Herbert is gone. Not exactly a huge shot or a huge shock. Zach Wilson's here. Justin Fields is still really standing out because he could be an 80 overall minimum at the end of the year. Justin Fields is someone I'm not going to wait on. I think he's my guy. I like him more than Justin Herbert in a franchise just because he's younger, not by much, but younger, crazy arm, still good accuracy, and crazy speed, crazy agility, crazy everything. Justin Fields will end up being so good for you. It's not about where he's ranked right now. It's about what he's going to be at the end of the year. You're going to see these older players stick around, and that can be good if you're trying to win right now. If you want to win a Super Bowl year one, you can do those things. But Chase Young's gone. Like some of these really, really good players just disappear. Like we're not going to see Brian Burns. He's just, he's too old or too young. And he's not old like these guys that are going to stick around. Another tip I would advise is going up and sorting by development trait because these guys are going to develop really, really fast. And then based on your knowledge of the NFL, knowing a guy like Julio Jones is into his 30s, you probably don't want to take him. Look for a player who is younger and then prioritize drafting them because this will sort by every super high development. Eric Kendrick's superstar dev he is 29 though. Maybe don't exactly want him. Panay Sewell, we know as superstar dev now. Only a 75 overall and he's a tackle. Probably don't want him. Najee Harris, did he have superstar dev? Najee Harris is superstar development. Might be a running back we keep our uh, we keep our eye on. Jalen Waddle. Does that mean he has superstar dev? That's awesome. Jamar Chase too. Okay, we might we might really think about some of these receivers. C C D Lamb right up there. You know, Denzel Ward is still on the board. He's only 24 years old. Star dev. But how does Patrick Sertan go before Denzel Ward? You know? Like, you gotta take Denzel Ward here. He's way too good to still be available. And we've taken two corners. But again, corners are really, really important. They're not easy to find. And we have two great ones locked up long-term. I think I'm gonna take Devin White here. This is our future sick user, Mike Linebacker, amazing speed, still very, very young. That's what we're prioritizing. 23 years old, really, really good player. That's the main piece of our defense right up the middle. Doesn't really get a whole lot better than Devin White for his age and development trait, and of course, overall. So as you can see, there are not a ton of amazing edge rushers left. This is another position that goes really, really early. So we could sort by age here and see all the young players, Rousseau, Normal Dev, thought that might be a star. But then we can also sort again by development trait and just look for the younger players. Like Cleveland Furl as star dev, isn't amazing. What do we see here at right end? Nothing crazy, but with edge rushers, you can count in outside linebackers as well. Rashawn Gary is one of those guys that we might wanna consider at this point but you might just have to draft edge rushers with the way I've drafted this team. Hassan Reddick, who I think Harold Landry's sticking out. 25 years old, star dev. Harold Landry wouldn't be too bad, but Hassan Reddick is just a little bit better. So safeties are really staying on the board. I guess that's a good thing to remember. I'm gonna have to start drafting these receivers soon. Like again, we wanna draft the younger guys because we can develop them. And having, you know, CD Lamb with star dev at 22 years old, who is an 81 overall, is way more valuable. 
let's find someone who really fits the bill. Then Antonio Brown, who's 33 with normal dev. Like, that's obvious. And But even Adam Thielen, who's 31 with superstar dev. I would rather have CD Lamb building a franchise. So I'm going to draft CD Lamb. And I want the three receivers of Lamb, Jalen Waddell, and Jamar Chase. I just feel like that's amazing, especially two superstar dev receivers. And the thing is, they might not even still be on the board. They might not. So I'm probably going to try and draft them as soon as possible. Hopefully one or both of them are still available. But as you can see, like they're gone. They're gone. Those type of players get drafted really, really early. That development trait is so, so valuable. So we missed the boat on that. But we did get CeeDee Lamb, who's awesome. I'm not really too upset about that, really. Jerry Judy's here. Jerry Judy is definitely a really good option as well. So now, even though we didn't get the two top receivers of the 2021 NFL Draft class, we have the two top ones of 2020, maybe, in Jerry Judy and C.D. Lamb. No Henry Ruggs, and I know I didn't mention Devontae Smith. People are going to be mad about that. But, uh, you know, he's right up there. You get it. Don't make a fuss, please. So there are only three players in the entire draft at round seven with superstar dev. Harrison Smith who's the youngest at 32, and then Calais Campbell. Cole Beasley might be 32. Yeah, he's 32 as well. But Calais Campbell's super old. So that is how highly development trade counts in the fantasy draft. So you really, really, really want to prioritize that early. You're not going to be able to keep a guy like Jalen Waddell or Jamar Chase on the board. You're just not. They're too young. They're too good. So if you looked at what we picked so far, we got a quarterback. We have two wide receivers. You'll notice I haven't drafted a running back. Because as you can see, we really just don't need to. Still a bunch of really good running backs and good young running backs available. It's tough to see, but no tight end, no offensive lineman. Still good tight ends available. We could take a guy like Evan Ingram and be ecstatic. And OJ Howard, I'd probably even be more happy with just based on where we'd be able to draft those guys. The offensive line, it's not super young or super good, but as you can see, it's still like very solid. You'd be stoked with Garrett Bowles at this point. Oh yeah, he's 29 already. He's like a 25-year-old rookie coming out of Utah with those Utah missions with the Mormons. It's crazy. But like Michael Onwenu, you'd be very happy with. Like you do not have to draft offensive linemen early at all. It's a waste of a pick because you can still take young, good offensive linemen and develop them. I'm going with Jayon Brown here. He's 26 years old, middle linebacker with good speed, good coverage. Jayon Brown fits the bill. All right, Clyde Edwards-Alaire just went off the board, which means if we want a running back like Jonathan Taylor, now is the time to act. And I do. I want a 22-year-old running back with unbelievable potential. That one makes a lot of sense to me. <laughs> Jonathan Taylor, welcome to the Giants. The great thing about a fantasy draft is you can also decide if you want to be a 4-3 or a 3-4. And now that I've drafted you know, two inside linebackers who I actually think quite a lot of, we could just be set and draft edge rushers, but based on the talent on the edge, I would rather draft those guys in an actual draft than the fantasy draft. So I'm gonna look for one more off the ball linebacker, like Jerome Baker, Isaiah Simmons is the, is the one. Hold on, Isaiah Simmons, star dev, 23 years old, super young, crazy fast. Isaiah Simmons is the overwhelming obvious choice there by a mile. You would never, ever, ever Catch me making that mistake again. You want Isaiah Simmons on the team. He's just way too big, way too fast, way too good. You can play him at safety. You can play him at linebacker. I don't know if you want to play him at slot corner, but it's an option. It's an option. You could definitely do that. And as you can see, there are still some good corners available, but not long-term. Like Chris Harris Jr. is 32. Kyle Fuller, 29. Like still like decent, but it's not ideal. So we don't really have to worry about a cornerback for a little while. All the good safeties stay on the board. Like we could still be very happy with Jeremy Chin or Deshaun Elliott, hook him horns. He's really solid. Julian Blackman, Juan Thornhill. The safeties are still very good and they just stay available. Maybe not so much at strong safety, but you could draft two free safeties and move one to the strong side. Not really too much of an issue. We've drafted our receivers. I still don't really need to worry about the offensive line at this point. So I'm worried about the defensive line. We could go 
in a number of different directions here. I still want to draft someone who's decently young that can end up developing. Like I want to stay away from some of these guys that are at 30 years old, even if their overall is decent. So I think Matt Judon is the best player here. 29 years old, a little old, but is pretty good and has star dev. I, I think he's going to be the best option. Or what we could do is get a little bit crazy and actually go way down here and draft someone like, I don't know, Aziz Ojolari or Jalen Phillips out of Miami. Jalen Phillips is going to be the guy. This is where we start to draft the rookies. He looks kind of rough right now at only a 72 overall, but these guys will develop if they have the development trait. If you draft someone with normal development, that is on you, and that's a mistake. I think we'd be happy with AJ Epineza at this point. 22 years old, star dev, and now my defensive line, with the exception of defensive tackle, is built. Let's go with Big Bob Tunyon here. Finally taking a tight end, 80 overall, is 27 years old, crazy good catching, pretty decent speed, big target. Robert Tunyon is the first, I guess, technical piece of the offensive line I'm taking, <laughs> even though he's not an offensive lineman, but will be on the offensive line quite a bit. And let's see, are there any good D tackles available? Definitely are. Brandon Williams should probably be the pick here. He is a little bit older, but we could just end up taking some good players there. It's not like Linval Joseph or Damon Harrison are super good. And a guy like Tyler Davison only has normal dev. So Brandon Williams will be the pick here. And now we're just going to take good development traits across the offensive line. Tevin Jenkins. Go Jaquaski Tart here. Still upset that it's Jaquaski and not Jaquiski, but Jaquaski Tart. Kind of missed the boat on safeties a little bit, but you can't take every position. That's the thing. I think Anthony Harris is 29, 29 years old, will be my other safety. That isn't too bad. We'll go Andrew Speed here. The star dev guys are getting a little bit lower in overall now. I'm not going to take a 65 overall offensive lineman in this spot. But we do need some guys to actually play on the O-line. Again, missed the boat a little bit here. But it's really not too bad because these guys, like, they're not too old to draft. Like, Connor McGovern really isn't too bad here at 28, 75 overall. Ben Jones, really not too bad at 32. Offensive linemen take a little bit um, more time to actually regress. Matt Paradis, 31, probably will be the guy I end up taking. He is a little old. He's not the craziest overall, but these guys are going to start to go off the board. So we want to get somebody in these spots. I like how Jack Anderson's a picture of Jack Youngblood. <laughs> That's not who that is. Uh, we're going to go Quinn Miners here. Of course, the very fun senior bowl center slash guard out of Wisconsin Whitewater. And it will take star dev there. We can afford, you know, slightly overall at one of our positions for a guy that's going to develop pretty well long term. And then the last pick, I can take another tackle here if I want to. And Daryl Williams is not the worst at 29. Juwan James isn't super old either at 29. Let's go Juwan James. And now we can take our third corner. Is there anyone decently young here? Desmond Trufant, he's 30 years old already. That's crazy. And these guys have normal dev, right? Let's go Desmond Trufant for our third corner. So now that we've drafted pretty much a full team of guys that are going to progress really well, we can afford to take some older players. Still don't really want Antonio Brown. But John Brown, certainly not the worst. 31 years old, star dev. We can look to replace him. But for this year, John Brown's going to be really solid. And he's not going to regress too bad. So we have three receivers, three corners, a quarterback. Could use a backup running back. Someone to split carries. Probably don't want Adrian Peterson. Todd Gurley's a 78. What a crazy up and down career for Todd Gurley. He was so good at Georgia before his ACL tear. Oh, he was so good, dude. And was still so good in the NFL for some time. And then I think arthritis got to him. Super tough. Mike Davis is an 81. That's really interesting. Anyone with a good development trait? James White. I mean, that's our receiving back. It's a receiving back. It's really not too bad. And then it is round 24. Could take another defensive lineman. Like, Lawrence Guy really wouldn't be the worst. But what I'm going to do here is make sure we have the best special teams in the game. I'm going to take Justin Tucker. Hook him horns, of course. 
and um, I'm going to take the best punter in the game. Probably Johnny Hecker, if I had to guess. Is there a better punter in the league right now than Johnny Hecker? Could take Michael Dixon, who's probably not going to be number two. Hecker is number one. Michael Dixon's down here. A little bit younger, only 25 years old. Johnny Hecker might be 10 years older. 31, that's not really too bad. Johnny Hecker, superstar dev as well. Not that it matters too much. Now we have the best kicker and punter in the game. And I can really just let the CPU draft the rest of this. So as you can see, our overall isn't anything crazy because we didn't build for the highest overall. We would have just taken the highest overall player every single round. We're 77 with a decent offensive line. And Quinn Miners is definitely going to start over Xavier Suofilo. Like, that's not even a question. And Jerry Judy is going to play over John Brown as his CD Lamb because we want our highest potential guys to be playing the most. But overall, I would say our offense looks amazing. And I'm going to simulate a year just so you guys can see how a team like this is going to develop. And I'm going to set up the 4-3 so you guys can see how the team is designed to be. So after rearranging the defense, Isaiah Simmons lost an overall point. Jarrell Casey at D-tackle gained a couple. Jalen Phillips gained a couple at left end. But this is how the team's set up, and it looks really, really solid. We jumped up to a 78 overall, actually. Quinn Miners moved to right guard. Sofalo was moved to uh, right tackle. And then the rest of the team looks really, really solid. So I'll show you guys how they're looking in a year. It's really good. Okay, end of season one. I've had auto progress players on. And as you can see, things are starting to look pretty decent. John Brown regressed quite a bit, actually. Only a 76 overall. Justin Fields up to a 77. Taylor up to an 84. And morale's hurting some of their overalls a bit. Looks like our team was not very good in simulation. That'll happen. J.M. Brown got superstar dev. Marlon Humphrey got superstar X Factor. We did see some regression from some of these other players. And morale is just killing these guys. So, Jarrell Casey retired. Brandon Williams regressed because he's super old. That's why you don't take older players. But we did need some guys to just be solid at that position for a little while. So, I'm really not too mad about it. Year two, the team drafted a sick tight end and a... A sick tackle. I'm not going to play them because that's not the point of this video. I'm showing you guys, you know, how these players can develop over a couple years. So as you can see, the overalls are starting to be pretty good. Jalen Phillips, 77, is already up quite a bit. <laughs> Harold had superstar, but year two now. Judy and CeeDee Lamb, both an 84 overall. And they started Wheeler. Quinn Miners, though, by the way, is up to a 77 that's pretty good. That's pretty good. Tevin Jenkins up to a 79. Jonathan Taylor, superstar dev. Justin Fields into the 80s. He's already as good as Derek Carr in terms of overall. And then defensively, Jalen Phillips, 79. Epines is up to a 77. Dion, uh, Dion White, stop. Devin White up to a 91. J.M. Brown, again, superstar up to an 85. Isaiah Simmons, 82. Jameel Holloman, is that you? John Holloman. I saw a linebacker on the Giants. Shout out. If you watched uh, Desperado's franchise, you know all about the real deal, Jameel. Denzel Ward, 93. I mean, Marlon Humphrey, almost to 99. And what a look from Rush, by the way. But this is how good a team can be. So like, I'm not doing any, like, any team management so this team would be way more successful and way better but i'm just showing you guys how these guys are developing i don't know our injury injuries are definitely on injuries are definitely on that's hurting some of these guys for sure but fields 84 taylor 91 cd lambs in 87 jerry judy's in 85 and then defensively man the cpu's drafting some good players but tarts up to superstar jayon brown's up to superstar x factor Isaiah Simmons is developing nicely. You get the point, right? So, very good team. That could have been even better if I turned off injury for simulation. <laughs> Oops, all right. And uh, actually built the team myself. But this is just simulating to see some players developing. So, very, very solid. That's how I like to build the teams. If you have a higher pick, it might change a bit. You're probably going to want to take one of the top quarterbacks, obviously and then your team could be even better. But you don't always get that option. Don't, don't always get that luxury. So 
Hopefully this taught you guys a thing or two about how to draft a fantasy draft. And even if you have a completely different strategy, that's okay too. Hopefully you saw a different perspective and might incorporate some of these tactics. And if you didn't know how to set up a fantasy draft period, hopefully this helped you out significantly by actually learning how to set it up and start it. But that's the video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this one and enjoy the future videos coming out on this channel. Make sure you're subscribed, scroll down, it's completely free. I think a lot of people used to think that it costs money to subscribe on YouTube. It does on Twitch, where I stream pretty much every night, twitch.tv slash bang, the link is in the description. But on YouTube, it's completely free. So just scroll down, make sure you're subscribed. I think you're gonna like the videos and I'll see you in the next one. Take it easy. Back to the house, defense a joke, I'm laughing so loud. Speed burst good.